Today, the smallest video light kits that easily fit in your suitcase and weigh very little. Great for vlogging when you're out in the world. When you travel, video lights can take up a big part of your luggage and they weigh a lot too, especially if you use a three light kit. You need light stands, power supplies, cords, brackets, and modifiers. Today I'm at my mom's on the Kentucky-Tennessee border and I'm going to show you some really small lightweight two and three light kits you can stick in your suitcase for doing videos when traveling and hiking. Obviously the first thing you need is some light stands. So here's three light stands, they're very small, very portable, I've covered these in other videos, and three ball heads. So this is always the basis of my setup because they're usually a three light setup. So the most smallest light setup that I could possibly take is three light stands and three Jihoon M40s. These things are super small. The batteries are built into these, so there's no external batteries. You can charge them with USB, so you don't even need a, a charger that you, you mean, everybody's got some kind of USB charger already. So there's nothing really external that you need other than this, this is it. Okay, so I set up three Jihoon M40s. Should be pretty flattering lighting. They're really bright, so these are good for indoor. Doors. This is three Jihoon M40s going right now. This is your portable kit. So that's a good start right there. Next up, speaking of Jihoon, here is the Jihoon <coughs> Molas X100. Everybody talks about the X100 because this is what they see. And they see this and they go, oh, look how small that is. It's almost as small as that. It's just like a hard drive, just a very small, flat thing. This is what they think about. Yes, this is small, that's true, but you're not just gonna use this. What are you gonna power this with? So you need a power source, so now you get a reflector and a battery on there, suddenly this becomes this. You don't need to use the proprietary battery. You can use wall power, in which case you need to take these power bricks and the cords. You need at least two lights to make it decent. So now you have this. If you want to go USB, you need 100 watt USB power banks and 100 watt USB cables. This will not work at 100% unless you have a 100 watt USB cable. Oh, by the way, I can't even take this thing off anymore. This is stuck on here because because this little tab, this tiny little plastic tab that you move to put the reflector on here, they break off so easy. I mean, that that's another downside of this. And once it's broken off, there's nothing you can do. It's stuck on there, you, it's, or it, it, you can't put it on. I never use a softbox on these, and I'll tell you why. Let's put on the Bowens mount adapter here. This reflector here, in the Bowens mount is actually smaller than the reflector that it comes with. If you want to stick this into a softbox, this little reflector is going to put a little cone of light and create a hot spot in the softbox. Normally, you want a bulb, either an LED just fully exposed or a, in the case of a flash, the bulb is just sticking out freely inside the softbox and then it can put light all over inside the softbox, but this doesn't, this creates a hot spot. So I never use uh, these things. This for me is useless, so I don't use it. So what I do is I don't use the reflector. What I use is an umbrella. Instead of using the bracket that this comes with, I suggest using something like this. This is a, a bracket from an AD200 flash from Godox. Anything with an umbrella hole. And then you get an umbrella. This is a really portable umbrella here. This is one that I featured in previous videos. This is a ProMaster 45 inch silver. Look how small this is. And this actually opens up, this is great for traveling, into a 45 inch giant silver umbrella. And then that goes, I line up the LED right with the edge of the thing here so the light can just spread all over this whole thing. You can use the battery or you can use a cord, slide the umbrella in and out until you see the light is just hitting the edge there. So see, this is too close. You see all this dark space here from here to here. Slide the umbrella back until it lights up right to the edge here and you're ready to go. People think silver umbrellas give you harsh lighting like I showed you in the other video. It, create some specular highlights, but it softens the shadows really nicely. So the sun's about to go down, the light's getting a little dimmer, so I brought out two silver reflectors. I'm using an X100 on this side and a G60 on this side. It's starting to get dark enough to where I can start bringing out some softer modifiers. The silver are still the most powerful ones. There are silver reflectors, much more powerful than diffusers. So in this case, I like these. These look pretty good. It's nice and soft outdoors at sunset. 
It's still not bright enough to expose for the sky. For that, you're going to need the reflectors like this. So now I have bare reflectors on my face. The sky is exposed properly, but the landscape is black. Now it's totally underexposed. So you have to choose between exposing the landscape, the sky, or the face. You can do maybe two of them but not all three. This is the best way to get soft light with an X100, either with a silver umbrella or you can use a diffusion white umbrella like that. This doesn't make it as bright as that. The silver umbrella bounces all the light back 100%, so you get more brightness out of a silver umbrella. I personally prefer the silver umbrella because you get more power out of it and it just gives a nicer contrast to your look that I like. This is the best way to use the X100 to get soft lighting, but don't put it inside of a soft box for several reasons. One is you're gonna get a hot spot. The second thing is, remember all those warning stickers that were on top of these things when you buy them, it says warning fire hazard. Well, these things get super hot and can start fires. So the last thing you want is to have this inside of a soft box where, that's enclosed where the heat cannot escape. These are good because the heat can dissipate in all directions. It's out in the open. Okay, so that's the X100. These things are really, really bright. Next one up that's pretty bright and small and portable is the all favorite uh, Zhiyun G60. It's a little dimmer than this, just one stop less light than this. So it is very, very bright. With an umbrella bracket, you can use obviously umbrellas and things like that. Two or three of these in your suitcase take up no space, but then again, you have to take the power banks also. These are my favorite ones because the battery is attached to the light. This is the whole unit right here. There's nothing else that you need. You just turn the switch and it's on and it's ready to go. These are, of course, the well makings. They have three versions, the 40 watt, a 60 watt bicolor and 80 watt daylight, which is what I'm using here. Make sure you get the one you want. Three light stands, three lights. They're only at 20%, so they're barely on. I have a third one over here putting a rim light on me on the edge here. This is what it looks like when everything's off. I mean, it's not bad, it's all right. It looks kind of drab though. Presto, there you go. You've got some magic lighting, lighting you up in the middle of nowhere with no electric cords or anything. So here we are outdoors. I got a couple of well makings right here. I got two right here at arm's length and one right here is a hair light. Uh, when you're outdoors, it's best to find a shady spot. That way you have a clean slate to work with. This is what it looks like when there is no light on at all. My face should be pretty black and now you have a clean slate to work with. So now when you turn the lights on, you can control the lighting. You can control the color, the brightness, you know, how soft it is, whatever it is, the modifiers. But right now I've got two bare well makings on me right now. And this is what I like to use, small portable lights that are battery powered, have the battery attached to the light. I can just set them up and shoot wherever I want. And I always try to find a shady spot to do it. I love this. This takes up less space than two or three X100s. Look at this, this is self-contained. Here's the battery, there's no cords. All you need is three ball heads. And look at the battery. One of these batteries powers this light full power for half an hour. Just like this will power an X100 or a 60 for half an hour. Um, but look at the size difference between the two. This is big and bulky and it's quite heavy. This is small and they both power their lights for the same amount of time. This is 14.8 volts. It looks like an NP, but anyway, and you can take a couple more backups of these easily in your pocket. It is a focus beam. So here you can see the hotspot only goes to like right here. So half the umbrella is not being used, but it's still reflecting. And this is what it looks like when you have this. So this is not the perfect one for soft lighting unless you aim it at a bed sheet or something like that. Next up, we have these things here. This is a, this, this thing here is so simple, it's, it's, it's just as basic as it gets. This is not battery powered. It is something that you have to plug in a wall, but it's pretty bright. It's a BT4 model P12 light. It weighs nothing. This actually weighs less than this. Check this out, daylight. Tungsten, just by flicking the power switch. You have a lot more control of the brightness and the color with the remote. I just don't use the remote, I just use this thing full of power. This thing is so light and so flat and so takes up so little space. If, you're, if every ounce counts when you're traveling in a suitcase, this thing here weighs more than this. And it's bigger light surface, so you get smoother light. Now right now I'm lighting myself up with three of the plastic uh, cheap lights here. All you need is a light stand, and a power cord, that's it. There's no power bricks, no adapters. It's just a power cord that plugs into a power cord. You don't need adapters, there's no dangly adapter or any heavy cord or anything like that. 
it just plugs in and it's ready to go. I love these things. They're, they're, and they, they weigh nothing. They're so lightweight. What is this, 23 bucks or something on AliExpress? Okay, next up, you might not consider this portable, but these do fit in a suitcase. They weigh nothing and they're really, they're, they're just so, if you want soft light when you're traveling, check this out. Look at this. My favorite Home Depot four foot expandable shop lights. You saw this in the previous video. You want soft lighting. This weighs nothing. It actually weighs less than this. And it weighs less than this. All right, this is one light, just basic <laughs> light right here. All right, so now I have two of them set up. So the light wraps around me like I showed in the video and I should have nice lighting on my face. That only costs $23 a piece. Weigh nothing, fit in your luggage. <laughs> really portable. I love these things. Look at this, you can get nice softbox lighting outdoors without using a softbox that's gonna blow over in the wind. Now obviously you're gonna need some kind of power, so you need to run an extension cord, but there's usually a house or a shed or a barn or something nearby, something with power. So nowadays, <laughs> that's not the problem that it used to be a little while ago. So here I just ran an extension cord to the nearest house and there you go. Now I have nice softbox type lighting outdoors without a softbox that's blowing over in the wind. It looks big and bulky, but it weighs nothing. You can easily put it in your suitcase. It fits in just along the side of the suitcase. All you need is something to screw it into. That's why I suggest you get three of these things. These don't weigh anything. These go into a light stand. They swivel and they have an on off switch on the back. Here's your lighting kit right here. That's pretty good. If you are going to travel with these things, you got to do this. I learned this the hard way, so I'm passing it on to you. When you first buy these things, they have this cardboard protector over the end. Do not throw this away. I almost did, and luckily I didn't, because one of these things, I didn't have the thing over the end of it. And when I traveled, it got crushed on the end here in the suitcase, and it just ruined the end of it. It's all messed up. So okay, basically, it's made out of aluminum foil. These things are really lightweight. Wait, that's why I mean, they're not made very heavy duty. This, this part's okay. The end needs to be protected though. So always put the cardboard bit over there if you're traveling with it. If you were taking two or three X100s, the light kit would be this size. You don't just want to take batteries. For backup, you always want to take your wall power bricks just as backup, you know. If, so you're gonna need all of this, all of that, all the cords, two of these things. Reflector, here's this battery here and an umbrella. So now we're getting into a pretty hefty size travel kit, even though the light itself is not very big. It's a bright light, it's a great light. I do highly like it for travel, but look at all the support stuff that goes with it. Compare that with this. So this is an X100 kit. This is a 40 watt kit. This is a 60 watt kit with G60s, an 80 watt well making kit, an ultra light 12 inch flat panel kit, and a four foot Home Depot LED kit. Remember a lighting kit is not just a light. Even though this is a small light, what are you gonna power it with? You're gonna power it with a battery, you're gonna power it with wall power or both, which is probably what you're gonna take with you. So you're gonna need one of these batteries, a wall power battery, a cord, this cord, this cord, so even though this is small, it all adds up. As for a portable camera, this entire video is made with my favorite little vlogging camera, the Sony RX100 Mark VII Pocket Camera, which literally fits in your pocket. Believe it or not, most of the videos on this channel are made with this tiny little camera. All right, the cheapest, most portable, lightweight, soft light that you can get while traveling is this. It's a bed sheet. You can even buy one when you go on location. All you need is a couple thumbtacks or some tape and a big window like this. And this is what it looks like when you use a bed sheet as a soft diffused light. Now the sun just went behind a cloud, so this is actually kind of cloudy weather right now. And even then a bed sheet is still diffusing the light beautifully. So sunny or cloudy, you can get beautiful soft light with nothing but a $13 bed sheet. It requires no batteries, no electricity. It doesn't matter if it's dropped, you can wrinkle it up, it won't break. This is probably the easiest, simplest, most portable, cheap $13 giant light source you can get. I don't think there's any lights that cost $13. That's pretty amazing. So here I have a bed sheet stretched outdoors in the sun. You can <laughs> stretch a bed sheet anywhere. It's a big giant softbox. All you need is diffuser, 
between you and the light. 13 bucks, six feet across. All right, so here I am under a tree. I've got an X100 right here with the bear reflector and a well making right here just as a hair light. Then now I've got all well makings. They're not even half power. These are like 40% or something. They're barely even on. I've got two in the front here and one in the back is the hair light here. And it looks pretty good. This is what I like to use when I like to travel. I just like to light myself up with little tiny things. I have a battery attached to the light. Doesn't take up much space, really lightweight. No space in the suitcase. And it's portable and lightweight and compact and fun, fun to use. That's the, the key there. So I hope this made you think about what's the possibilities of what you can do when you're traveling on location, outdoors. And that's it. Should be fun. Photography should be fun. Video should be fun. All right, Marcus and Kara saying goodbye from the middle of Kentucky slash Tennessee.